All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, if you know me by now, I'm going to do this again until I get a response. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. That's the first trait of being in an innovation hub is a ton of energy that the founders bring. Um, so thank you. Thanks for being here. All right. Thanks for joining us here, uh, virtually or in person today. I'm pleased to uh, welcome you all to the Accelerator Center for our September town hall. Um, our town halls, if you've participated in this uh, in the past, uh, is really an important opportunity for you to get to hear what we do. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity and platform for us to share updates um, and also to stay connected, uh, to collaborate as a, as a community at large. So thanks again for being here. Uh, a ton of exciting announcements uh, today uh, to share. Uh, we're also pleased to welcome uh, Waterloo's MPP, Catherine Fife. Thank you for joining us today. Um, and uh, Catherine will be uh, making one key announcement uh, for the community. So looking forward. Uh, but first, it is important to recognize that we are gathered here today on the National Day. Uh, for truth and reconciliation. Uh, each time we gather in the space, we take a moment to recognize that the AC is situated on land that is the traditional home of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and neutral people. Through that recognition, we show our appreciation for their historic connection to this place. We also recognize the contributions indigenous peoples have made in shaping and strengthening this community. We're grateful for the opportunity to meet here on this important day and reaffirm our collective commitment to make the promise and the challenge of truth and reconciliation in our community. In recognition of this important day, the, I uh, ask you to join us in a moment of silence in gratitude for our indigenous community members and in honor of the victims and survivors of residential schools in Canada. Thank you so much. Uh, before we start, just a few housekeeping items. For those of you joining us virtually, uh, we have muted all participants and attendees to uh, minimize background noise and disruptions. Uh, we ask you that you please keep your microphone muted um, throughout the event. During our Q&A, uh, you can enter your questions in the chat uh, and the team that we have. Uh, we'll make sure that those questions are addressed. So the theme of today's town hall is uh, enhanced programming for our founders. Maybe I should pop up the slides. Let's see if this works. There we go. Um, over the uh, last few weeks, uh, the AC team, and a big shout out to them, they're all in the back, uh, has done a remarkable job of putting together a bunch of things that you'll see today. Um, if the AC team here can just do a quick wave of hands, at least you know that this is the team that does all the work, and I just get the opportunity and privilege to show up here and take all the credit. So really, the credit should go to the folks who just raised their hands, and uh, thank you for that. Um, and as a part of that, a few key uh, announcements that you can see up here, um, and we'll share with you each one of these, um, starting with the studio. Um, as you perhaps know by now, the uh, studio is one of the tenets of our new programming of uh, a bunch of founders who've joined us, uh, 100 founders who've joined us, who are probably here today, um, are, are part of this new community it really touches upon three things um, that I'm personally very fond of. In addition to the bullet points that you see up there, there's seed funding, which is always exciting for founders. Uh, but really, if, if you were to ask a question to an innovation hub like ours as to what is your position 
um, in terms of trying to build the next big thing, oftentimes you'll hear the answer, depending on which part of the world you're in, is, hey, I want to create the next big unicorn, the next big Tesla, or the next big Uber. I think we do have a tremendous opportunity in taking a stab at a really, really, really large fundamental societal problem like climate change. Um, and then look at it and go, well, what does it take for us to solve it? Typically, the answer is capital is a commodity, technology is depreciating. So the only two tenets by which founders operate are on those two principles, right? And the studio is a model by which you come forth and say, I am going to focus on this in a way that it, it, is, it is a long drawn game. And therefore, the first step to success in that long drawn game is seed capital. And the more capital that you keep getting through the program allows you to mitigate the risk. So we've looked at fundamental challenges um, like sustainability, climate change, healthcare, equity, diversity, inclusion, um, and, and many more. So these 100 founders were chosen on those, on those tenets. Can we take a stab at solving large problems, A, B, provide seed funding to get founders off the ground, uh, C, do it through partnerships uh, from across the ecosystem. Uh, and therefore, the studio for us is a really, really exciting moment in terms of new style of programming and the uh, ability to bring these 100 founders uh, from across the province together in a cohort. Um, so really very excited uh, to see these 100 founders come through. Um, and again, a big shout out to the team, the AC team, uh, for having pulled this off um, and credit where it's due uh, to FEDDA for funding this program. So thanks a lot. Really excited about this. It quadruples the number of founders in our community. Um, and at the tail end of this three-year journey, hopefully we'll see some spectacular solutions uh, globally that come out of Canada, come out of Waterloo, and, and from this community. So very exciting. Uh, this was an important piece that was an extension of our EDI strategy. Uh, EDI, as you know, uh, is a key pillar in our roadmap. We undertook this last year, uh, and we have six new mentors. Um, the beauty of the fact that we have these six mentors is the fact that some of them have actually gone through the program. Um, Victor is somewhere here. Uh, so alumni mentors, as well as new mentors who've been there, done that before, makes this truly exciting for us. So for the founders who are looking for enhanced mentorship, uh, uh, a plethora of diversity in terms of having been there, done that before, I couldn't ask for a better uh, mentor team. Uh, Stuart, sorry, I, didn't, uh, I failed to acknowledge you, but Stu's here as well. Um, but yeah, six exciting new mentors. Uh, for the founders here, please leveraged, uh, leverage what they bring to the table. Um, exciting times ahead. And this touches upon one of the things that we undertook last year through, uh, through EDI. Uh, so the question that you can ask is, why do we have these town halls? Um, over and top of the fact that this is one way to get a bunch of human beings in three dimension back into the building, which is really the core reason. Just kidding. Um, it's, it's, it's an opportunity for us to uh, showcase what we do on the heels of having listened to you. Um, it's a great feedback loop that, uh, that allows us to collect data from the founders, understand what we need, and then hopefully try and be honest uh, in terms of positioning what we, what we bring to the table. Um, so every three months we uh, do this town hall. It's hybrid, um, and, and really the, the feedback that we continuously, uh, the, the data that we continuously collected from you folks was all about, can we provide uh, programming that has an element of flexibility? Uh, and that's really what, uh, what it's all about. So every day, our amazing programs team is working to collect, I think there's a little bit of feedback, but put up with me, um, your feedback and implement changes that make the program more accessible and more effective for our founders. 
Uh, we're excited to make two key announcements today regarding the uh, AC Incubate program. Over the past several months, we've been focused on your ask that we make the program more accessible, flexible, and incorporate more asynchronous learning opportunities uh, that have a digital flavor to it. Uh, through our adoption of digital program delivery, the platform that we use, Biz Planner, and the creation of learning videos for our phase one of programming, we've, we've executed and implemented that. Uh, today, we're pleased to formally announce that we'll be amping up those efforts to make our remote programming more accessible and more efficient with the support of our provincial government and the Ontario Trillium Foundation. With the support of a $144,000 funding grant through OTF's Resilient Communities Initiative, we will be building our virtual learning center, creating a digital preferred service provider networking platform, and creating more asynchronous video learning content to support our founders across our programs. Additionally, we'll be adopting and implementing a suite of tools that allows us to work efficiently with founders situated in rural communities and those typically underserved by innovation ecosystems. These efforts align with our commitment to continuously improve the programming that we offer and to make sure that the AC is not only the number one full stack hub in the world, but the most inclusive one. For more on this, we're pleased to welcome our local MPP and great advocate for entrepreneurs across Ontario, MPP Catherine Fife. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to spend a little time with you this morning. Um, I was telling Jay that I first came to the Accelerator Center 10 years ago, and every time I come into this space, I'm inspired. And so today is actually very special for me to be part of the Ontario Trillium Grant Foundation, which is uh, putting forward $144,000 to this amazing place uh, to grow your mentorship program, to reduce barriers to access to this space, and really to... <laughs> build on a very successful track record of sharing knowledge, of knowledge transfer, and then of commercializing your ideas and your research, creating better places, better technology across this province. Um, I'm, I'm gonna put one entrepreneur on the spot. I mean, I was talking to a, a new member here at the Accelerator Center and he was telling me that he's working on a very innovative idea around reducing barriers to technology so that people can see better, sight. Sight is pretty important. And uh, at the end of our conversation, I said, well, what was your inspiration uh, to develop this technology and to come to this place? And, and he said, quite simply, uh, we can do better. And I've had, over the last decade, I've had so many conversations with bright, intelligent people who want to make our communities stronger, who want to reduce access, uh, who want to reduce those barriers to technology uh, because of cost. And that's the kind of spirit that the province of Ontario needs. Ontario needs more accelerator centers. They, we need to replicate what is happening in this amazing place across the province. And I think that's a testament to receiving the $144,000 from the Ontario Trillium Grant Foundation. So, uh, in conclusion, when I think of this place, I think of hope. And I know that over the years, great relationships have been built because of co-location. And I know that this ecosystem works, and I want to congratulate the entire Accelerator team and Jay and Tabitha for really uh, raising the profile of the, of the people that make this place special, uh, but also that put Waterloo on the map. Thank you very much. Thank you, Catherine, for your kind words and the uh, continued support. Uh, please, uh, one more round of applause. Thank you uh, and, and for the acknowledgement and, uh, uh, and the collective gratitude that we owe to you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Separate from the OTF funding announcement, our next new initiative and exciting announcement addresses uh, program accessibility, specifically program pricing. Oops. All right, so this is 
in tune with the feedback that we've collected in the form of surveys um, and, and, and conversations that we've had with founders. Um, and this should really be exciting to you folks. Uh, entrepreneurship, as you know, is fraught with risk. Um, quick show of hands, how many founders here? All right, fantastic. Um, and as you know, it, for the rest of the folks who are not founders, it is incredibly challenging to be a founder. While it sounds like it's fun from the outside, the, 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 the requirements on a monthly basis to meet payroll and realizing that there are families dependent on you, let alone this giant vision that you're chasing, is extremely, extremely difficult. So uh, when the founders tell us they need flexibility in terms of programming, when they need uh, things like uh, the, the, the elasticity of price that, uh, that they need so that the extra amount of capital can go somewhere else. Um, you know, we, we've done a lot of synthesis of those uh, data points, and I'm super excited to uh, announce to you that our programming, of course, is now virtual and therefore fully accessible, but I think the big announcement um, is that our programming costs are gonna go down by 50%. So. Uh, and that is starting the 1st of November. Um, so for all the founders who are already in the program, starting 1st of November, you should have a little bit of extra money that uh, hopefully you can use to scale, to hire, to build new tech, uh, and buy a Ferrari. Just kidding, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Maintain good governance and uh, build your company. Uh, for the founders who are coming in, and potentially we'll have a lot more thanks to that announcement, uh, please reach out to the client engagement team uh, or anyone at the AC and we'll be happy to articulate uh, what that means. Um, and again, this goes back to the idea that uh, any founder anywhere in the world can now access any program. Um, but if you really ask me the best one to go to, you're already here, so don't go anywhere else. Um, and we really paid attention to what you've been telling us. Um, so big announcement from our end. Uh, and again, a big round of gratitude from us to our clients, which are the founders. So thank you for that. Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, I think we have a series of super exciting partnerships that's gonna get announced, and I would love for my colleague Tabitha to come up here and uh, walk you through us, walk you through this, sorry. Sorry, I just have to find the right spot notes. Norm, does it make sense for me to move to the other microphone if this one is giving feedback, or am I okay? Okay, wonderful. Perfect, thank you. Well, it's always hard to follow Jay anytime in these situations. Everyone loves to hear his stories and his impact. But I'm really excited today to have the pleasure of telling you about a couple new really exciting partnerships that we have here at the AC. In addition to expanding our mentor network and our preferred service provider networks that our founders have long had access to, through the initiatives that are going to be funded by the Ontario Trillium Grant, we're excited to build a preferred service provider network. This network will be comprised of trusted industry partners and mentors who are going to be available through one-to-one -one mentorship hours, in-kind support, and a variety of other special pricing offers to help na startups navigate their journey. In addition to our long-standing partners, many of which are here today, like PwC, Gowling, Bearskin & Par, Artemis, Cowan Insurance, and RSM Canada, we've recently added a number of new partners to our grouping. Let me see if I can get this to work. Here we go. Um, so join us in welcoming Azal Law, Freshworks for Startups, Smart Strategy, Chasm Consulting, Rahi Patents, JLL, and Owner to our preferred service provider network. And we saved one of the most exciting partnerships for last today. Um, we're excited to be joined today by a number of people from the AWS for Startups team. Our founders have long enjoyed uh, AWS for Startups credits, um, and those are very often a big part of the value of our program and a big part of their startup journey. 
Under the new expanded partnership that we're pleased to discuss today, AC founders will get access to even more credits. That's up to $100,000 in credits with AWS for startups, along with business supports and 24-7 access to technical support and experts on the AWS support team, as well as an abundance of their learning and educational material. Uh, we're thrilled to announce that AC companies will be a part of this startup's AWS for Startups initiative, and will also be receiving one-to-one -one office hours with technical support experts from AWS starting on November the 2nd. Today we're joined by a number of members, as I said, of the AWS for Startups team, but I'm pleased to introduce Midori, um, who is the account executive who will be working directly with our founders here at the AC to tell you a little bit more about the partnership. Thank you, Tabitha. I uh, have a lot more to add. I was going to say you did a great job of really summarizing um, the new and exciting developments um, and resources that we have available to uh, anyone affiliated with the Accelerator Center. So I also want to thank Jay just for giving us the opportunity to speak here today, really introduce ourselves, and tell you a little bit about the startup organization here at AWS. Um, before I get started, though, I just would like to see a show of hands. Out of curiosity, who has not heard of AWS before? And I won't be offended if you haven't. <laughs> okay, so good. We've got a good mix of, of folks in the crowd. So uh, I will go into what AWS is in a minute. Um, but before I do, I would just like to introduce some of the extended team that we have joining us today. So as Tabitha mentioned, my name is Midori Huguenin. I'm your account manager, and I work exclusively with startups uh, here in the Kitchener-Waterloo area. And my goal is really to ensure that you're getting the uh, technical resources as well as the business resources that are going to help you really grow and be successful. We also are, gen are joined virtually by Jennifer Chang. She is leading uh, the partnership initiative between AWS and the Accelerator Center and is part of our strategic engagements team uh, at AWS. She's located out of Vancouver and is also a former founder herself. Uh, we also have Patricia Nielsen. Uh, you can see her here. Um, and she is one of our startup sales leaders. Again, she's located here in Kitchener-Waterloo. Um, and she manages a team uh, that supports some of our largest, you know, top startups all across Canada. And finally, we actually have a fourth teammate uh, sitting right in front of Patricia. Her name is Anna Cower, and she is your dedicated solutions architect. Again, exclusive to startups in Kitchener-Waterloo. And you can think of her as your go-to resource for any kinds of technical questions you may have about AWS. So going into you know, what AWS is, AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. And in short, we are a technology company that allows businesses to leverage our, our cloud computing services to grow your business and really continue to innovate. Um, you can see here that there are a mix of Canadian top startups, including local ones like Applyboard, um, that are working with AWS today. But it's not just for a technical reason that they choose to work with AWS. There's also a lot of business reasons and programs available to you that you can leverage. So I think one of the really exciting things about the great work that the Accelerator Center is doing is they're able to provide to you some of these programs and additional resources to really help you grow. And I just want to take a moment to, first of all, congratulate all of you for all of the success and all of the growth that you've invested in your startups today. I have no doubt that as being part of the Accelerator Center, you're a part of a great community, a great program that's really going to help continue to innovate and scale up your startups. So on that note, Tabitha kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, so um, we would like to take this moment to announce a couple very special announcements in a partnership with the Accelerator Center. So like Tabitha had mentioned, there's a program that is available to the folks uh, through the Accelerator Center, uh, through the Accelerator Center called AWS Activate. 
And what's special about AWS Activate is for the very first time, you are all eligible for up to $100,000 in AWS service credits. And it's important to highlight here that this tier of credits, this amount of credits, is the most premium tier as part of the AWS Activate program. And it's because of the great work that the Accelerator Center provides to startups where they are able to give this to you as a benefit of being part of their program. So you may be wondering, you know, that's great, but what exactly is AWS Activate? Um, and in short, it allows you to leverage uh, those AWS services and put these credits towards the use of your cloud technology um, to help offset some of that initial research and development that you may actually um, be doing on AWS. So I highly suggest that if you want to take a picture or scan this QR code here, um, you'll be able to do that and go directly to the application link to start applying for a AWS Activate today. And it's not just AWS Activate, but it's also the technical office hours that Tabitha had mentioned are available to you. So these technical office hours, they're going to start on November 2nd. They're going to be virtual. And it gives you an opportunity to actually meet with your dedicated AWS startups team to talk through how you can actually leverage these credits. So um, you'll be meeting with either uh, Srijit or Jones, who are two of our dedicated AWS solutions architects. And you, think, you can think about them almost as if they're CTOs for hire. So you can pick their brain and really understand how can you make the most use out of these AWS credits to help building the foundations of your, uh, of your startup today. We also have Jennifer Chang, who I mentioned earlier, will also be joining those office hours. And because she is an ex-founder, she'll be able to give you a unique perspective from the business side of things, just around anecdotal advice on how to grow your startup if you're curious to learn more about that founder experience. And lastly, you may be wondering, who should actually attend these office hours? And don't be surprised, even though it says technical office hours, we really encourage that it's not just your CTO and not just your technical lead that attend, but I truly believe that your CEO, your COO will also get a lot of value by attending these office hours and being able to interface and um, discuss their ideas with Jennifer and with our essays. So we put together um, a couple different topics to get you thinking about what you can actually discuss at these office hours. Um, first and foremost, uh, if you want to understand how exactly to claim those credits, you can certainly bring that up to us and we are happy to help. Um, it's also important to note that there are multiple contract terms to the AWS Activate credits. And so before you apply, if you would like to understand which contract term is best suited for your business, you can bring this up in our technical office hours and we're happy to go into the details there. Um, secondly, if you're already building on AWS, which would be great, you can actually bring um, your technical architecture or any questions that you have specific to what you've already built and run that by our team and just make sure that you are building against our own recommended best practices to make sure that what you've built is secure, it's cost optimized, and you can really make sure you have a second set of eyes to review your technical architecture you may have already built on AWS. If you are not familiar with AWS, that's okay. We can also go over a very high level AWS 101 to make sure that you have an understanding of who we are and how we can help you with your business. And maybe if you are already familiar and you wanna go into some more detail about very specific topics or very specific services such as artificial intelligence, analytics, storage, anything like that, we can certainly go into a lot more specific detail on any of those topics if that is something that you are interested in. And the last thing I want to say is that there are many ways in which we work with startups outside of the technology. So if you're part of a very specific industry and you'd like to understand 
maybe from a mentorship perspective or from a specialist perspective, maybe you're in climate tech, maybe you're in security, we have industry specialists that can talk to you about some of the challenges that might be very unique to the industry that you're in. And lastly, we want to take this opportunity to also let you know that we're running an event in celebration of Oktoberfest on October 20th, and you can think of it almost as a hackathon. It's something that we call a game day, and it's a fun, team kind of built experience where you are getting that hands-on experience, growing um, your skills on AWS. So without going into too much detail right now, there are going to be details that are shared with you after the town hall, but I really encourage you to take a look into this. Um, come find me, come find Patricia, Anna, any one of us during the lunch. And if you want to learn more about how to sign up and really, really what it is, we're here to, uh, to just kind of give you that awareness and make sure that you do have the ability to register if that's something you'd like to do. So to conclude, you've got two resources that you can reach out to. The first is uh, Leanne Hen Henderson at the Accelerator Center. She is going to be your point of contact here that you can reach out to for any kinds of questions. Um, and secondly, as I mentioned before, you also have Jennifer Chang um, as part of the AWS team that you can also email um, if you'd like to learn more. And of course, you have any three of us here available, we'll be hanging around at lunch that you can uh, chat with or follow up with afterwards if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how we can help you be successful on AWS today. And I will pass it back to Tabitha. So thank you to the AWS for Startups team for joining us. We really appreciate your ongoing support. Um, I know it's probably a question in the chat, although I can't see the chat. Yes, we will circulate the slides to you, and there'll be more information about the AWS credits forthcoming immediately following uh, the event today. And Jay, I'll hand it back to you to talk a little bit about fundraising, because that's every founder's favorite topic. Thank you. I did want to share a story about AWS. Uh, and I can promise you that uh, Patricia Midori and Jennifer don't know about this. So back in September of 2020, when this little virus was making rounds, um, and it sounded like nobody knew what was going on, I got hit with COVID. And I figured I'm going to take my own data symptomatically every four hours uh, and then try to make sense out of it. So I did two things. One. Every four hours, I looked at my symptomatic data, uh, actually my wife and I, and then, um, um, and, and this was about 20 to 30 parameters every four hours, uh, reached out to AWS and started off with a spreadsheet. If there's anybody here who I've shared that spreadsheet with, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, I know I've shared it with at least a couple of mentors. So I took this data, put it up on the spreadsheet, and very quickly realized that if you go to a doctor and if things get worse, the likelihood of relating back to what this started off with is going to be very limited. So the two things I did was, one, I put it up on AWS, and I reached out to, uh, to an expert at AWS to do two things. One, can I containerize my data? And I use Kubernetes for anyone who's interested in knowing more what that is. Uh, and the second thing was to run machine learning with the idea that if I open this up, the likelihood of many people, uh, many other nerds, who will take their data, make it public, run ML uh, to figure out, hey, are you, are you going to run into an issue where you need oxygen or not? Um, so A, I was able to do it on AWS for free. Uh, I didn't need the $100,000 credit, but it's super valuable for all of you who are using AWS, if you don't know yet. And B, I was actually able to get in touch with somebody in Seattle who helped me with the Kubernetes part and eventually to the ML part. The ML part didn't take off, largely because I was the only nerd in the world who was willing to put my COVID data up publicly in September 2020. And like I said, this, I just thought of this while Midori was sharing the, the, the value. All right. Um, to the topic of uh, funding and fundraising support. Uh, of the founders who earlier had their hands up, 
how many of you would like to have access to funding? <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, before we get to fundraising, I did want to talk about uh, product market fit, which is the story that I thought I would talk to you today about. Because if you don't have this, you're not going to be able to raise capital. Although that's probably not true. Last year, Canada saw about $14 billion come into the country in the form of early stage venture investing. In 2020, that number was 4.5, 4, 4.4. Um, and this year, of course, things have tanked. It's nothing to do with the country. Just globally, venture capital has, has taken a triage approach. So I would strongly recommend the founders to understand what product market fit really means before you go raise capital. Um, and oftentimes, founders think that if you have a minimum viable product and um, you have one paying customer, all, that is product market fit, and you raise capital to increase the scope of the number of customers, um, and the truth is far from that. Um, I love this picture on the right. It uh, talks about how every founder testament to the number of tabs that you open in a browser always is dealing with multiple uh, clients and potential customers at the same time with the idea that one of them is going to be the translatable beachhead to product market fit. Um, and, and there is a big fallacy in, in that. And I'll give you three um, symptoms, if you will, to understand if you have a product market fit issue or not. Um, most founders who are always in love with their product, and you should be, uh, always think that the value proposition, if it checks off, it's easier, it's cheaper, and faster, or any of the three, then your value prop is, is solid. And surely that means that a bunch of uh, paid POC slash pilots should equal product market fit. Can you guys relate to this? Yeah, if you, if you check one of these boxes in the value prop slide, you probably think you have product market fit, and you probably do. Um, the second issue you have, typically with enterprise sales as opposed to B2C, is uh, customers, every conversation that you have, either through direct or through channels, uh, are very interested. Um, and you always have this mentality that you're one quarter away uh, from your product really taking off. Um, every founder goes through this. If you had the first instance that the customer is super interested and you mentally encounter the second instance where you think, I'm just one quarter away from taking off because I have an interested customer. Can you folks relate to this also, hopefully? <laughs> okay, good. So far, so good. Um, and most times, founders think that competition is other founders, or a bigger company. But in reality, if you spend time trying to articulate the problem with your customer over and over and over, and you have very little time left for articulating your solution, um, that again is a symptom of potentially not having product market fit. You're probably close, but you're not quite there yet. Um, and lastly, if you do have the fit, how do you price yourself? And once you've established the price, there is very little to, uh, to change that. Um, if you've hit this point, you're, you're reasonably good. The question becomes, OK, how do I get past this? How do I know I have product market fit? Before I answer that question, the, the idea of product market fit actually is really well articulated by the folks, by one of the GPs, Mike Morris at Sequoia, who said, if your neighbor next to you at the bus stop has his or her hair on fire, the very next step is product market fit. Meaning, the first thing you've got to do is put that fire out. Nothing else matters. Um, you can slap your head with a brick. Most likely, you're going to take, some, uh, take water and douse it. But that's when you know you have product market fit. Product market fit is a thing that is very, very inherently known to you. And it's usually you requiring to raise capital to throttle the latent demand that exists outside of the room. That 
that is when you know you have product market fit. Product market fit is not the other way around. When you think you have a customer who's willing to pay and you need capital to scale your operations or business. So that's really the big dichotomy. So the question is, well, how do I, how do I double click on this? And this is my product market fit pitch to you. I would love to do a session on product market fit or a series of them specific to, uh, to the founders. Um, and I'll probably announce that over our digital channels or otherwise fairly soon, but I'll be happy to do a workshop uh, on this if you folks are interested. And I've done this in the three startups that I've built. One of them didn't work, uh, but the other two did, so I think I know what I'm up to. All right, now this gets us past to, uh, to the question that you wanted to ask in terms of funding. Um, what are we doing to increase access to funding? The studio, as you know, is a new program that gives you access to capital. Um, we're launching a series of investor readiness workshops. Um, we have a massive Rolodex of investors up to the tune of 50, I think, uh, which is a far cry from the half a dozen that we had a quarter ago. Uh, and all importantly, uh, Shabab Fazli, who joined us four months ago, um, is our point of contact. I don't know where Shabab is. Oh, there he is, uh, at the back. He's the person to go to. Um, and uh, Shabab's put together a really, really solid set of workshops and interventions in terms of fundraising. Um, and if you folks haven't interacted with him, please do. He's going to make his office hours available. Um, and that will lead to two things, one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with Shabab, one-to-many sessions with other investors. Uh, and lastly, uh, a series of workshop with the VCs that Shabab has lined up. So exciting times ahead. And that, by the way, is for all the founders in our community. It has nothing to do with specifically the studio. The studio will have its own set of sessions in terms of fundraising um, and raising angel as well as institutional capital. So that should be exciting stuff for you if you folks are founders. Um, we covered that. And I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, before I jump into uh, questions, sorry, did you have an announcement of that? No. Okay. All right, so we'll uh, jump right into questions and any thoughts, feedback, negative feedback, truly appreciate it. Please do tell us that this thing sucks and we'll change it. Um, but yeah, any questions? If you have a question, I just ask that you use the mic so the folks online can hear your question. Hi, I'm just uh, speaking on behalf of a, a few founders I've spoken with. And there's really the question of we've got a preferred vendor list and there's uh, various people that are in your network to work with. Uh, there's also many startups that are already starting to develop product market fit and have uh, potentially good matches with other startups in the AC community. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if you're going to include any programming or any way of very valuable matches to be created in potential deal flows. Mm -hmm. It's not about reaching out to the wrong people, but if there's right people that would be a good match, uh, it would be very validating to have the opportunity within the community with other founders to make some deals happen. Is there any plans for that? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, so the answer is the, the intent clearly exists. We absolutely want to make it happen. Uh, the challenge we've been faced with, which I think is par for the course, is uh, the inability to get real human beings together. Um, so we can do it two ways. One is we run a specific scripted, curated program to make that happen. And that we can certainly take as feedback and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll ensure that something of that nature is done. The other is can we enhance the number of events that we do where the collision of that deal flow happens serendipitously. Um, and on that note, we do have a bunch of events that we'll put on our calendar um, over and top of scripted town halls like this. So I think with those two, we should be able to address that. But I, but, but I hear you. You know, it's, it's the only way to make collisions and deal flow with founders, not just from our community, but from across the community happen. You know, on that token, we do have the AC program running in geographies outside of Canada. Um, so those will have a bit of a virtual flavor, but 
no point taken, and, and, and thank you for highlighting it. We'll, we'll surely make sure it happens. I saw another hand. Hi, Jay. Um, so we drove here from Toronto with my business partner. Um, mm -hmm. We are living far away from here, uh, almost two hours. Um, the issue that I have is the virtual programs, mm -hmm. because I was a part of an incubation program back in South Korea. We were there in two years, meeting all the people, walking around, meeting the founders. And now, uh, do you think having this program virtually is as effective, and have you done anything to make it so? Yeah. So firstly, thank you for driving, driving down. Uh, I personally think, and, and, and being, having been a founder twice, and I'm in my 40s, I think the only way to build companies is by having human beings interact in person, physically. Because you never know what intervention there, there is that is unscripted that you explore and discover. And it's impossible to do that on Zoom. Right? But that's my personal opinion. Uh, it's not the AC opinion, if you will. Um, so for the program per se, we, for all the programs, we are trying really hard to make sure that while the virtual slash hybrid component runs, what can we do to bring humans back into, into a space? Um, the series of workshops that Shabab is putting together has a hybrid flavor. And the idea is, over a period of time, we'll try and force is a strong word, cajole people to, to come in person. Um, so do we have a, a timeline for it? Not really, but we do want to take the conscious effort to try and do this in person, physically. The second thing, which I, I honestly think we have not done a good job of as an organization, is, uh, is the ability for founders to mingle and get together as a cohort. Uh, so in our core program, the Incubate program, we operate on a, on a rolling cohort basis. But with the studio, which has a bit of a cohort flavor, we'll try and make sure that that happens. Um, yesterday, Chris announced, uh, if, you haven't, if you folks haven't met Chris, he's the guy to harass uh, for the studio. He's put a ton of effort in making sure that the studio program is up and running the phases that he's undertook, undertaken before the program actually started, uh, this program called the Curate Phase, et cetera, uh, is really a lot of effort that Chris put in. So Chris yesterday announced, uh, was it lunch or breakfast or pizza or something of that nature, right? Yeah. Uh, to bring the founders together. Um, and I think we'll, we'll make a point of taking that feedback and ensuring we do more of those. Uh, because I do know from experience that, that collisions that happen organically, especially in a cohort and for a studio, uh, it makes a ton of sense to do it that way. Now, this is not, a, not necessarily an AC-only issue. Most incubators out there are really struggling to get folks back in physically. So most of them are going to learn from the best and therefore we will step up to the plate. Just kidding. Hi, <laughs> thanks. Uh, also drove in, not from Toronto, but from St. Catharines, which is probably worse. But uh, <laughs> uh, nice to be here. I, I went to Waterloo University 20-something years ago. It's really nice to be back in my hometown. I've been in Sweden for 20 years. So, mm -hmm. um, But anyway, uh, my question is... Um, Kind of, I've noticed that a lot of the scheduling for the uh, the mentors and for the <clears throat> other sort of events and things have been during working hours. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I work about fifty hours a week as it is because I have to commute uh, plus the eight hours a day. And I'm wondering, is there any uh, hope that maybe more of the events and so on can be uh, after hours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Actually, before that, what are the names of your startups? Sensiware. Um, Sensiware? Sense oh, Sensiware. Got it. Uh, mine's uh, Crutch Gecko. Oh, Crutch Gecko. Okay. I remember reading both, both of your companies. Okay. Um, the answer is yes. I think we can, 
we can take that feedback and do something with it. Um, I mean, uh, entrepreneurship as it is, is fraught with the lack of time in the day. Fortunately, we have time in the night. I'm just kidding. I don't know if, if you guys want to do it. Uh, but we'll be happy to test the waters uh, and see how it goes nights, weekends. The team's going to hate me for this now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. Um, um, are there other people here, I'm just curious, who are kind of holding down their full-time job and also trying to start a company? Show of hands, no? No, a couple? Wow. Wow. Okay, thanks. Anyone else with a question? Tessa, did, do we have anything in the chat? All good. Fantastic. All right, folks, it is a wrap. Thank you so much for showing up. Uh, very excited about some of the announcements. Thank you to our partners. Um, yeah, we'll be launching here. The, a good chunk of the AC team is here. Please feel free to uh, introduce yourselves, ask whatever questions you have, and uh, have a terrific weekend. Thank you. <laughs>